I want to talk about this lock construct just a little bit more. Uh, it's a native C sharp thing. It's not native to the CLR or the missile level of code. It's actually C sharp sugar, and I want to show you what that sugar uh, translates into. Uh, the compiler literally takes this lock structure and uh, says monitor dot enter uh, baton try oopsie oh, I guess I need a semicolon don't I uh, try uh, finally these are exception structures hopefully you're familiar with these exception structures if not go watch the exceptions playlist uh, try finally and then in the finally I'm going to say monitor dot exit uh, right here. And the reason why we put this in the finally is because if there's an error inside this try uh, block, I'm guaranteed that the code in the finally will always execute no matter what. And if we grab the baton, I want to be sure to let go of that baton uh, even if there's a problem. Okay. Otherwise, it's a lot like uh, locking the bathroom stall, crawling out from under the door, which is kind of gross, and then um, letting letting other uh, all the other patrons to the restaurant be stuck outside waiting to use the restroom that's incredibly rude we do not wish to do that so we always want to let go when we're done in recent versions of the compiler uh, they actually changed this up a little bit to there's another uh, overload of enter which takes a reference parameter ref go look at the playlist for value types and reference and all that stuff if necessary but basically it's a ref parameter for bool meaning lock taken. So 99,000% of the time, probably, uh, you'll always get the lock uh, when you say monitor.enter. But if there's a slim chance that some of the code inside of enter had some issues that couldn't grab the lock, maybe there was an error, an internal exception or something, then this uh, lock taken will actually be false. Should be rare. Um, in fact, I've never actually had a time when it uh, it's never been false, I don't think so. So uh, anyway, let's let me show you the reason they have that is lock taken. Okay, uh, I'm gonna say assume false here, and then I'm gonna say ref uh, lock taken. Okay, so enter. Uh, by the way, tell me if you got the lock or not. And then down here, I'm gonna say if the lock was taken, uh, then we want to exit. Okay, it's not good to try to exit on a baton that we don't own. That's Rude, and I think it actually causes an error. I can't remember. Nah. Anyway, so so there's the recent uh, translation from the compiler. We can actually prove that the compiler does all this work. I'm going to go back, Control Z, all the way back to the pure lock here on Baton. Uh, save this file. I'm going to go to my uh, Visual Studio command prompt here, C colon backslash, which is where I've saved this CS file. I've saved it to the root because we should save all our files to the root directory. No, I just, uh, it's a file I like to use as a scratch pad, quickly grab and, and touch easily. So I saved it to sql and backslash here. Uh, let's compile it, main class.cs, and then I have the reflector installed. I'm going to main, reflector main class.exe. Lock was introduced with C sharp when it originally came out. So this, actually, I, I cannot choose a a version here, if I go to options, I can't go low enough where it'll completely desugarize that lock because uh, it was actually native in C sharp 1.0. But if I go to main here, um, C sharp, you see that there's the lock, so it didn't actually pull it out for me and, and do the monitor enter and exit. But if I actually go to the IL, I can see the uh, monitor exit and enter and exit. Notice here, uh, let's see, monitor.x enter, so it calls monitor.enter, but it doesn't call the one that just takes a single object. It takes it calls the one that takes a bool reference, which um, it looks like this, like this flag is its boolean, this load local address of flag, and so it's passing flag here as the second parameter. And then uh, let's see if we can find the finally here. Here's the monitor.exit. Looks like they load local2. Local 2 is flag. So yeah, they actually do the F here. That's what they're doing. Oh, so that's kind of interesting what they're doing here. Load local 0, which is flag. So basically load flag. And then they load a constant integer 4 bytes wide of 0. Check equal, which is going to say, hey, is 0 equal to 0? Is, is, basically they're saying, hey, is flag false? Right? Compare flag to false. If that's equal, well, take the result of that, store it in local 2, then push it back onto the stack. 
I know I'm kind of waving my hand at all this. Go, go check out the um, some of the IL videos I have if necessary. I, I don't. It's not necessary for you to really understand everything that's going on here, but I do want to prove that. Yeah, it's it's loading. The, it's checking the value of flag, and then it checks break true. If it's false, it skips over this. If not, it falls through and says, "Hey, exit." All right? That's our if statement I had before. Remember, I said if lock taken then call exit. If we don't have the lock, then we don't want to exit on a lock we don't have. But if we do have the lock, then call exit. And that's what this logic right here is doing. Anyway, so so hopefully I desugarize this lock statement for you. It's pretty straightforward. Monitor, enter, monitor, exit. In future videos, we're going to look at semaphores, mutexes, a lot like monitor, but um, a little bit wider scope, and you can do some other things with them that you can't do with monitor.